Previously, IA17 allowed for operating leases to be recognized off balance sheet, but this will no longer be the case. In terms of IFRA 16, all leases, subject to a few exceptions, are required to be recognized in the balance sheet. That is, there will be a lease liability and a right of use asset. So how then do we measure the initial lease liability and right of use asset? Simply put, the lease liability is measured as the present value of all lease payments that are not yet paid at that date. These include the residual value guarantees, variable payments, penalty and purchase options if these are reasonably certain. The discount rate to be used is the interest rate which is implicit in the lease and if that is not readily available, then it's the lessee's incremental borrowing rate. The right of use asset is initially measured at cost. Cost comprises of the following. One, the initial measurement of the lease liability. Two, any lease payments made at or before the commencement of the lease, less any lease incentives received. Three, any initial direct costs incurred by the lessee. And four, an estimate of the costs to be incurred by the lessee in dismantling and removing the underlying asset and restoring the site and asset to the condition required by the terms of the lease. Now let's see how these concepts would apply using a comprehensive example. Harbour Limited entered into a lease agreement for the use of a new tugboat on the 1st of July 2016. The key terms of the lease require five annual payments of $100,000 to be paid in arrears and an option to purchase the tugboat for $200,000 on the 1st of July 2011. Harbour Limited is unsure if it will exercise the purchase option. The interest rate implicit in the lease is 8% and Harbour Limited's incremental borrowing rate is 9%. The useful life of the tugboat is 10 years and Harbour Limited uses the straight line depreciation method. What is the initial measurement of the lease liability and the right of use asset on the 1st of July 2016? The first step would be to calculate the payments that are required under the lease and to then present value that using an appropriate discount rate. Five payments of $100,000 will be included in the calculation of the lease liability. The purchase option of $200,000 will not be included as Harbour Limited is unsure if it will exercise that option. The discount rate would be 8% as this is the rate implicit in the lease. The incremental borrowing rate of 9% would only have been used if the rate implicit in the lease could not have been determined. The present value factor for an annuity for 5 years at a rate of 8% is 3.9927. Hence, the lease liability on 1st of July 2016 is $399,270. That is $100,000 times 3.9927. In this example, the right of use asset would be equal to $399,270 because there were no initial direct costs or requirements to restore the tugboat at the end of the lease. To conclude, the starting point for bringing the leases into the balance sheet is to first work out the lease liability using an appropriate discount rate and to then calculate the right of use asset.